How would you like to never buy pepper seeds again? I'm gonna show you how. Hey, what's up, it's Boss. I'm a gardener and a lover of all things spicy. Today I'm gonna show you how easy it is to save your own pepper seeds so that you can grow plants again next year without having to buy more seeds. This is a super simple thing and really, there's four things you need. You need ripe peppers. You need some way to get them open, so a knife. You need a place to dry them and a place to store them. That's it. So let's get into this, it's gonna be easy. So first things first, you really need to have ripe peppers. How do you know if a pepper is ripe? Pretty simple. One, it's not gonna be green, okay? Not even a jalapeno. I know you've all seen jalapenos at the stores and in restaurants and they're green. Those are unripe. Those are not the kind of pepper that you wanna be saving a seed from. They're gonna be immature and less likely to germinate if you take seeds out of a green pepper. But more than just color change, when you want to save seeds from a pepper, you want it to be super ripe. Really, really ripe. Red and a little bit leathery. You should lose that crunchy feeling. So you're going to want to look for these types of peppers, right? They're not all going to turn red. Some peppers ripen to orange or brown or yellow. Um, very, very few ripen to anything close to green. There's a few things like Gator Jigsaw that kind of turn this mustardy green color when they're ripe. But if it's green, odds are it's gonna turn another color when it's fully ripe. And then wait a few more days on the plant till it's good and squishy. If you cut it off the plant before it's fully ripe, those seeds are gonna stop maturing as well. So your best viable seeds will come from peppers that ripen on the plant and then you let them overripe in a couple of days. And at this point, all we really need to do is cut them open. Now, I showed you this. I'm not actually going to use this big old knife to cut open these tiny little Kangstar Starling peppers. I'm going to use a little paring knife, a little bit more well suited for the size of these peppers and it'll give me some more control. All I really need to do here is get it open, pull the seeds out, and then we'll go on to the next step. I'm going to cut a couple of these open so you can see what I'm doing. What I'm going to try and do here is just pierce down the middle since they're nice and soft. I can just run the knife through. That'll lessen the chances that I cut seeds in half, but it won't eliminate them. There's a pretty decent chance that you're going to cut seeds in half as you do this. Don't save those half seeds. They won't even grow a half a plant. Toss them out if you cut seeds in half, all right? But you can see here, there's maybe eight to ten seeds in this tiny little pod. Those all look good. They are light in color. They don't have any dark spots in the center. So these look like they're probably all going to be viable. All I'm going to do is take my knife here. I'm not trying to cut anything. I'm using zero force, just the weight of the blade scraping across the pepper, and that will pull those seeds out. You'll want to make sure that you are only opening one type of pepper at a time so that you can keep the seeds separated. This is a Hangzhou 3 that mysteriously turned red instead of orange, but this I will cut later in the day um, just to get seeds drying for it so I don't confuse the seeds with the starling that I am trying to save today. You can see we can just repeat that process again. I'm gonna drop the pepper because I'm trying to do this you know, for the camera instead of the normal way I would down on the ground, on the cutting board. Peel this guy open again. We're looking at maybe eight seeds here per pod so not a ton in these little pods which is nice because you can actually enjoy the flavor these are very delicious they have a decent amount of heat um, nothing too crazy but they do have a nice sweetness to them get all those seeds out of there we'll do a couple more here just so we have a good pile of seeds so you want to always make sure you're doing this with clean equipment. Always clean your knife ahead of time. Make sure it's sterile so that you don't introduce any yuckiness into these seeds that might be carried on while you store them. You also want to make sure you have a clean cutting board or a clean working surface, whatever it is you're working on. Again, just to keep any kind of germs or potential diseases or pathogens out of the seed stock. All right, we have a pretty good stack of seeds here, probably three to four dozen total. 
And now we need to move on to the next step of this process. All right, so now we're on to step three, drying the pepper seeds. There's really two ways to do this, passive and active. The far most common way people do this is passively. They'll take like a paper towel, paper plates, even just small plates, small Tupperwares, anything that they can put a layer of seeds on to air dry. So you would take these seeds, scoop them onto the paper towel, leave it someplace that's not gonna be in direct sunlight, that's at a fairly even room temperature to dry out. Works really well. Usually takes anywhere between one and five days, depending on your relative humidity. I happen to live in Colorado where it's super dry. I can often get seeds to air dry in 24 hours. There's also an active method to drying out your pepper seeds. And that's by using one of these amazing little machines called a seed dryer. <laughs> so these were developed by a guy who is a member of the pepper lovers community, uh, Texas Troy. And he went ahead and designed and 3D printed these in a modular way. They have these drawers that are completely removable. Um, everything has got this kind of mesh lattice work. Ten drawers here. You can actually adjust the stacks if you want to have a shorter stack. Um, I wouldn't go much taller than ten, otherwise it's probably going to tip over. And more importantly, you're not going to get the benefit of the fan at the bottom. So these have a PC fan or a laptop fan in the bottom that you can plug into the wall just an adapter, and then when that's on, it's sending a gentle breeze all the way through the stack of seeds and dries them out much faster. It also does so without adding heat. So a lot of people wonder about using like a food dehydrator to dry your seeds out. Not a good idea. You're probably just gonna cook them and they're not gonna be viable. Using a machine like this, I've had seeds dry in as little as four hours in one of these. I actually have two of these 10 stacks because at the end of harvest season, I've got all 10 drawers packed full um, like packed full, plug them in and I let them go for maybe 10 to 12 hours and everything is perfectly dry. Really important that you dry your seeds thoroughly. If you don't dry your seeds, what will happen is when you store them, they will mold and go bad. And one wet seed can ruin that full batch of seeds if it's stored in with other dried seeds that mold can spread, bad time. Now that isn't to say that you have to dry pepper seeds if you just want to replant them. So let's say I was ready to plant another Kangstar Starling plant right now. I could take these freshly harvested seeds, put them in soil or whatever grow media I choose to use, and they will sprout. So drying isn't required to make a seed viable, it's required to keep a seed viable over time. You can tell when the seed is dry by one, looking at it, you should be able to see that it looks dry, there's no more moisture on the surface. But two, if you push your fingernail into it a little bit, a wet seed, you'll leave an indentation pretty easily. A fully dried seed, it's gonna feel tough. It's gonna have a nice husk or a shell on the outside that you'd have to press pretty hard to start leaving a mark. So then you know your seeds are fully dry. You can always wait another day if you're not sure. If you're, especially if you're doing passive drying, take the time, let them sit as long as you can possibly tolerate or your family members can tolerate having plates or napkins all over the house. That's why I really like these seed dryers. If you're interested in getting one, join the Pepper Lovers community. There's a couple of guys on there making them right now with their 3D printers. Um, there's actually a few different models. People have made slightly different designs. So there's a lot of options out there. You can find us on Reddit, on uh, Discord. I will leave links below. There's also a Facebook group, uh, MeWe as well, I think. But I usually hang out on Discord, so you're welcome to come by and say hi. But now let's move on to the final step of the seed saving process. It's really easy, it's called storage. So once your pepper seeds have been completely dried, either using a seed dryer or passively, but they're fully dry, you're ready to store them for next year. Or I've actually found that pepper seeds, when stored properly, last many years. Just this year, I have successfully germinated and grown seeds that were from the 2016 season. So that's six years ago. There's a couple common ways you'll see seeds stored. One of them is using these plastic baggies. They're two inches by two inches typically. You can get smaller or larger depending on what you prefer. They're really inexpensive. They work well for storing a decent amount of seeds. You can slap a label on them and write what's there. Don't write directly on the plastic, even with a Sharpie or a permanent marker. It'll wear off, trust me. The other common thing you'll see is these little, um, like a coin envelope or whatever you might know them as, but they're just small paper envelopes that you can then put seeds inside of. Some people even will combine the two and put the seeds in a baggie in the envelope for maximum security. What I like about these envelopes, this one here is from Forgotten Heirlooms, great place to buy pepper seeds. Um, you can put a big beautiful label on the front. It blocks out all the light, so you're gonna make sure you can keep your seeds out of light, which is an important part of storing. What I don't like about these 
is if you don't have the plastic bag on the inside with them, I'm always worried that flap's gonna come open because of the way that I tend to store my catalog. I store my seeds in an old CD booklet. So I've got page after page after page stuffed with little seed baggies, seed envelopes. This thing sometimes goes sideways or upside down when it's being moved around the house. I don't want to take a risk of anything coming out of these. So I tend to prefer the plastic baggies for my own use. Um, if I had something like a filing cabinet or ideally one day I want to get an old card catalog, perfect way. Then you don't have to worry too much about, you know, these things going upside down and dumping their seeds out. You can also store seeds in Tupperware, um, jars, really anything that you can seal off and put someplace that's gonna be relatively stable in temperature and ideally out of the direct sunlight. Seeds that are exposed to sunlight or fluctuating temperatures or moisture will probably not last very long. The most viable seeds are the ones that are stored the best, but as you saw, it's ridiculously easy. Four steps, have a ripe pepper, cut it open to get the seeds out, dry them and store them. Once you start doing this, you never have to buy pepper seeds again. Now I say have to, because if you're like me, you're gonna end up buying dozens and dozens of different varieties every year because you wanna try something new. That's different. But once you've bought them once or grown them once, you have seeds that can last you year after year after year. This is one of my favorite parts about gardening because sometimes you fall onto happy accidents, cross pollinations, unintended mutations, things that are really unique about a plant. And you can carry those genetics on season after season and have the same thing or maybe something new as it evolves and changes every year to enjoy from your garden. If you want to learn more about gardening, how to save seeds, anything like that, hit me up in the comments below and subscribe to the channel. I've got a ton of content about mostly peppers, but also gardening in general. I also do a lot of hot sauce reviews, how to make hot sauces and other spicy foods, as well as a whole bunch of random content. Again, mostly focused around peppers because I love these things. I appreciate everybody watching, and remember, plants help us grow. Peace.